And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. May God raise more of Mary Magdalene and Salome and more of women for this generation in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because they answer the call and they never look back. Even in the time of pain and sorrow and confusion and when everyone was scared to go to the grave early in the morning many were scared to go to the grave but a woman whose demon was being casted out remember to say thank you many received miracles many received blessings many were risen from the dead many were paralyzed and they were healed but many nobody came back that's that early morning at the grave because they are all scared they were all afraid they were full of fear what were they afraid of because the Roman soldiers, you can't stand them. It was their time. It was their time to rule. And they rule with iron hand. They kill anybody, anytime and anywhere they want to. And so because of that, everybody was scared to go to the tomb. But these three brave women hallelujah i call them heroes of faith three brave women heroes of faith defy every fear and every torment they were ready to die how many women will be ready to die today for jesus the other faith we know that some of them put explosive on their body and they are ready to die for their master. How many of us are ready? To take the heat for Jesus. How many of us are ready to stand. And fight. For the Lord. How many of us are ready to stand the mockery. That because you are serving Jesus. Oh people are mocking at me. People are saying all kind of things. No I'm not going to do it again. And people quit. They just quit. I'm not going to sing in the choir. No more. I don't like what she said to me. I don't like what he said to me. I'm not going to enroll in the, in the fellowship. Women fellowship. Men fellowship. I'm not going again. I can't take it anymore. Is that not what we said? But I'm telling you, when you read this story, you will see different characters. Some of them misbehave. Some of them try their best. They try their best. You know, I love Peter's zeal. Peter's zeal. When when the soldiers came at the, I mean, at the Garden of Gethsemane, he couldn't stand to see his master being pulled away. And he decided to defend his master. But he didn't do it in the right way. What did he do? He carried his sword. He carried his sword. Held it very well. Repositioned it very well. <laughs> Color bottle. And he cut off the ears of the servant. Of one of the servants of the priest. He cut it off. And said, I will teach you the lesson of your life. 
So you know if I try it again. Jesus looked at Peter and said, No. Drop the sword. Drop the sword. For they that live by the sword shall die by the sword. Amen. May you not live by the sword in the name of Jesus. Amen. If anybody has a sword in your heart, many people have sword in their heart. You have sword against people. That is why when you look at people, you turn your face. It is a sword. You have as you still have a sword. Help me tell your neighbor, drop your sword. Drop your sword. The sword of bitterness. The sword of hatred. The sword of accusing fingers. There's all manner of sword. I mean sword. You need to drop your sword. That is what Jesus told Peter. Drop your sword. Do you have any sword against your family member this morning? Do you have any sword against your spouses this morning? Do you have any sword in your heart? Jesus told Peter, drop it. There were many characters. Is it Judas Iscariot that ate with him and did everything with him? Can you imagine selling your master? Not one billion pieces of silver, but 30 pieces of silver. That was how he valued Jesus. That's how some people look at you and value you. But said, I'm not like that in Jesus' name. That is not me. I'm valued by the king of kings. He bought me with his precious blood hallelujah he bought me with a price i am purchased with the blood of jesus i'm purchased with the blood of jesus he placed a great value on you see yourself the lord the way god sees you not the way anybody sees you because he purchased you with his blood hallelujah hallelujah Many, many characteristics. I mean, you could see everything that was happening. Women coming to give him water to drink. And they kick. <laughs> they just push the water away and push the woman away. I mean, it's just confusing. Controversy all over the place. Jesus was a man of so much controversy when he came to this world. Because why? He will not please man. That is why we are God pleasers. That is why our name is God pleasers. I will always please him. The one that has called me. He never wants to please nobody. And that was why there was so much controversy. The priest thought he came for them. And he was not following their religious rule. And they look at him and they are thinking, what? We have been here. How old is this boy? We have been here. We've gone to the school. We have PhD in Torah. We have everything. We know everything. And to them it was like insult. Jesus was insulting them. But he was here to please no man. He was here to please only one person, his father. He was here to please his father. And that's the, uh, and that's, that's the call we God pleasers have received. On this earth, we have vowed to please only our father. The one that purchased our blood. The one that purchased us our life. He purchased and gave us life. Eternal life. Zoe life. A life eternal. Forever and ever. That's who we are. 
And that's why no matter what we have to go through, oh yes, we have to go through it. Some of you have not been called names yet. And yet you are quitting. Nobody has carried a stone and throw on you yet. And yet you are quitting. Disciples went through all manner of things. Can you remember? Stephen was being stoned to death. Because he answered this call. I'm talking of physical stone. Not stoning with the mouth. You know there are stones that are mouth stoning. But his own was physical stone. You have been called to answer this call. I'm reading verse 2. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulchre and the rising of the sun. At the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, who shall roll away? Who shall roll us away? The what? The stone. From the what? From the door of the sepulchre or, or the tomb or whatever. Who will roll away this stone? I believe that stone, you know, it could be, maybe it has to be probably 10 hefty men that has to roll that stone. But you know what? They, were, they went by faith. If you must serve God, you got to do everything by faith. The just shall live by his faith. You have to, if you must make it in this life, if you must break through in this world, you got to move by faith. Because faith is what speaks for you. Faith is what God sees. Faith is what moved God on your behalf. It's not the crying that moved God. It's faith. They moved by faith. And the stone was so big for them to roll away. But they decided to just go anyway. And God wants you to take a bold step. This year, this month, this week, you will take a bold step. Do things that you have not been able to do before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you have the king of kings inside of you. Break protocol. Hallelujah. Break grounds. Do things that an ordinary man will look at you and say, how did he do it? How did she make it? That is what we are called to do. Who will roll away the stone? And I believe some people are saying in their hearts today, who will roll away this trouble in my life? You are here today. We see you dress beautiful. You dress, you're looking so handsome. But there's a stone that is standing before you. And you've been thinking, who will roll away this stone from me? Who will help me roll this storm, this trouble, these challenges? What I have to go through, who will roll it away from me? That is why he came. That is why he suffered to roll it away for you. you your suffering of lack of job. You're suffering because nobody loves you. You're suffering, you know, because you don't have a house, a car, a whatever you don't have. Nobody loves you. Nobody cares. Nobody bothers about what you are going through. That's a stone. That's a stone. But there's one that has the power to roll every stone, no matter how big it is. Every stone I see this morning roll away in the name of Jesus. Somebody, you miss it. You miss it. 
I want you to imagine that stone. Look at it right now. Look at it very well. That stone is so big. It's like a big mountain that is standing before you. But this morning of resurrection, there is power for that. I said there is power for that. I see your stone roll away right now. I said right now. I said right now. I said right now. Right now. Right now. The stone is rolled away. The burdens are lifted. The trouble is destroyed. In the name of Jesus. Somebody said the stone is rolled away. I command you to roll away. I command you. I said open your mouth. Open your mouth. I say, command you, I command you that stone, roll away, trouble in the house, trouble with your children, roll away, in the name of Jesus, roll away. Roll. Every stone must roll away. He was able. He was able. And they said among themselves who shall roll away the stone from the door of the sepulchre. And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And, and entering into the sepulchre, faith, they saw a young man sitting on a right side clothed in a long white garment and they were what afraid and he said unto them be not afraid ye seek jesus of nazareth which was crucified he is risen hallelujah he is risen he is no longer here when you go to Israel, you will see it. Those of you that will go to Israel this year, you will enter that place. You will see it. He's no longer here. In case you are looking for the living among the dead, he's no more there. Hallelujah! He's no longer there. He's risen. He's not here. Behold, the place where they laid him. The angel told them. But go ye. Go your way. Tell his disciple and Peter. That he goeth before you. Into Galilee. They shall see him. As he said unto you. So they were given the gospel to go preach. They took the gospel. They took the gospel. Go tell the disciples. Go tell Peter. Why should they tell Peter? I believe when Peter denied Jesus three times, he was discouraged. He was discouraged. He did, I mean, it's, it's a place where I love to see where Peter's house was, where Peter, you know, I went to some of those places before, and I see, I mean, all the instances he had to, you know, and then when I look at that and the, it was the same Peter with the upper room. The same Peter turned, oh, I mean, everything turned around. He preached with the power that resurrected Jesus. And people, thousands gave their life to Christ. If you are here and it's like you are Peter, in this story and you are discouraged probably you are you you feel you would have done more for god you feel you would have been functioning well for god and it's like you know you are not doing well i want to tell you that the little thing you do for god in this life matters
If you give anybody a cup of water to drink in the house of God, you've done something big. Don't give up. You must start from somewhere. Many people think that they must stand and preach like Bishop, and preach like Mommy Mac Jones, or preach like, you know, our, 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 our Bishop elect, or preach like uh, Reverend Adio and other people. Everybody has his gift in the house of God. Don't overlook what you're doing. You'll be surprised to see your, your blessing will be bigger than the preachers. Yes. It's all about faithfulness. In little things. It's all about faithfulness. How faithful are you to this master? How serious are you with him? Do you take him serious? He wants faithfulness. Faith is the language of heaven. Faith, faithfulness. That is what he did when he came to this earth. He was faithful to his father. And he came to this earth by faith. Did everything by faith. Went to the cross by faith. Died by faith. Went into hell by faith. Took the key of life and death by faith. Brought it back to us. And said, behold, I give you power Amen. over all the power of the enemy. Amen. That's what he did for us. By faith. He was not living to please nobody. That's why many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, them, Sadducees, the far, the, they are very far Pharisees. And they sad, you see them. They were always sad when they see Jesus. Because Jesus will not compromise. He was not ready to compromise with the Pharisees and the, and, and the Sadducees. They tried to bring him down. Hey, take it easy, take it easy. This is not how to get these people. He said, no. I must do the will of him that sent me. While it is day. The night cometh. When no man can walk. He needed to accomplish something. He was purposeful. He was focused. He was focused. He had a mission. He had a vision. That his father gave him. And if you are a person of vision. And a person of mission, you don't tolerate nonsense. Because anything, if you tolerate, anything can slow you down. Anything. So if you are not ready to get the names and, and receive all kind of negative names, you are not called to pursue that vision. Just go sit down and say, okay, let me relax with these people. Let's flow in the same level. No. They wanted Jesus to flow with them. And he said, no. I have a purpose. I came to this world for an assignment. Is there anybody that know and believe that you are in this world for an assignment? Let me see your hand. Wave it. Every one of us. We are on assignment. We are here for a purpose. We have been called. We have been chosen. We have been set apart for his glory. And they went quickly and fled from... I will just go to verse 8. And they went quickly and fled from the sepulchre for the trembled and were amazed ne neither said they anything to any man for they were afraid when you are a carrier of vision you don't tolerate distraction 
they refused to tell anybody because they knew that if they tell anybody, anything can happen. Their vision will be aborted on the road. There are things that God has put in your life that God wants you and him, only you and him, fight for it until you give birth to it. There are great things God has deposited in us. If we can look unto him, the author and the finisher of our faith, who is Jesus, you will break forth in Jesus' name. Amen. I say you will break through in Jesus' name. Amen. I say you will break forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Nothing will hold you back in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now when Jesus risen early in the morning, uh, early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene out of whom he had casted seven devils and she went and told them that he has been with him as they mourned and wept. Disciples were weeping and mourning. They were weeping and mourning. They couldn't imagine. Ah! Our king. Our power. Our everything. How comes... And you know, when the Roman soldiers, they were very cruel. They would not touch the women. Most of the women, they would not touch them. But when they see a man, they will finish them. Yeah. Because they knew that the men were the ones standing with Jesus. And the men would be the one to deal with him. To deal with them. They can do anything. They just zero their mind and say, oh... Let's forget about this woman. Forget about them. You know. And they are looking for the woman. I mean for the men. But none of them will see our men in Jesus name. Amen. No devil will see our men in this God pleaser in the name of Jesus. Amen. They will not touch you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are untouchable in the name of Jesus. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. They didn't believe it. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went unto the country. And they went and told it unto the residue near, um, neither believe they them. They never believed. Jesus still appeared to two disciples. They were walking. You know, to, they were going to one of the villages about maybe seven miles, you know, and they were walking and they were just talking. They said, ah, I'm sure uh, they were not, they would have mentioned their name. Maybe they were, you know, one of the 70 disciples of Jesus because Jesus has the 12. He had the three. He had the 12. He had the 70 and he had the 120. So we believe probably it was 70 of the disciples, you know, that one, two of them were just walking on the way and they were just talking. Huh? But they say he will rise up again the third day. And they were just, you know, discussing among themselves, you know. And do you know Jesus appeared and started talking with them also? And they were talking with Jesus. They thought he was a, a stranger. I mean, they didn't know it was Jesus. Some of you, Jesus is with you. You don't know he's with you. You are busy crying in that house. He's there and you are crying. You have him in every, every corner of your house. And you are still weeping. I don't have anybody. And nobody is here with me. Who told you? Jesus is in your kitchen. No, it's true. Jesus is in your bathroom. He's in your bedroom. He's in your living room. He's all, in fact, let me tell you there. Something, there's a spot that when I 
from time to time, when I read that spot, I don't even remember. God starts speaking to me. In the kitchen. He does some unusual things sometimes. He chose the foolish things of this world to confirm the wise. The day you think Jesus is not with you, he's right there. Two of them, two of these men were walking. And Jesus joined the talk and he was talking. He said, he was talking with them and said, yes. But I think you, you know, he's risen or whatever. You know, as they were talking, you know. And they went, he gave them, he bought, he bought fish for them. They sat down, they were eating. He ate the fish with them. And while they were eating, the Bible said their heart was burning inside of them. And immediately he disappeared. When Jesus disappeared, that was when it was done to them. He was the one. He was the one. May you not miss your day of visitation. Yes. I said, may you not miss the day of your visitation. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. That was when they went and told the other disciples. Afterward appeared, verse 14, afterward appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraid them with their unbelief and hardness of what? Because they believe not them which had seen him after he he raised he was risen and he said unto them do what all right that's where my message is go somebody say go somebody say go go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature that is the assignment he gave us that was his hunger that was his passion that was his vision that was what driving him when he came to this earth it was like jesus wait now wait and eat food he said no my food is for me to do the will of him that sent me that's my food they try everything to stop him he said no 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 there was something driving him Go, go, preach the gospel. Go. Can you stand up and prophesy to somebody this morning and said, Here. Yeah,